accessible device. I feel like I feel like it's great to have things that don't have traditional instrument interfaces in them. I mean, the one thing I love about this Pixel Hate, we'll watch a video about him in a second. Uh, I don't know if you can see, everybody says it has an and with a circle marked out on it. It says abandoned normal devices. Um, which I feel like, yeah, I mean, when we're in this realm, like why like what necessarily ties these things to traditional musical instruments, you know? I mean, even that, that thumb piano that you're playing, like there's, um, I mean, those are sort of arbitrarily pitched. You know, they're pitched by ear. There's like not really a lot between that and a, and a piano. I mean, it's called a thumb piano, but um, I think maybe the thumb piano is just to allow access to a Western mind to understand it as some sort of piano-like device. But visually, it doesn't really look like a piano to me. Um, so, but I, I think it's really, a really very exciting device. Um, so let me see if this is a pixel big guy. So I wanted to, uh, so this is called the Master Stroke DS, this device that's on, that's on here, and it utilizes this, uh, an R4 card, which is commonly used to pirate video games and um, it's sort of, it's getting harder and harder to get, um, but they're still relatively accessible. And there's a whole bunch of people making what they call homebrew music music programs for it. Uh, Pixel Hate um, made something called the Master Stroke DS for it that is, this is what this guy is. And I have it set up right now on a... Uh, I have it set up right now on Echo, so you can just have nothing. Tremolo. Take the effect off. Half tremolo. Not half tremolo. has some limitations. Your BPMs that you can choose are 50, 60, 75, 100, 120, or 150, so you have to like <laughs> make everything fit. And it's really fun because the nano loop that is on this device, this little cartridge here that comes from a guy named Oliver Wichow out of Germany, is uh, it bases everything on, on a hexadecimal system, which is um, the traditional numeric system is 1 to 10 or 1 to 9 and then 0. Um, a hexadecimal system is 1 through 16, but after 9, you start to introduce letters. So it's, it's not really worth going into, but, but what it does is it does some weird things with the BPM. So, for instance, I can set things to 99 beats per minute on here and 101 beats per minute, but I can't set things to 100 beats per minute. So this will play 100 or 120 or 75, so I can't write things at 99 BPM here and try to play this with it at 100 BPM. But I can write things in, in 120. Like today before everybody got here, I actually took the song that I was gonna show on here and sped it up to 120 so I could play it with this device. So the, there's some things to, to be concerned with there, but whatever, I mean, the thing that really excites me about them, and I think the reason that I wanted to come in and do the presentation is you know, 50, 40, 50 years ago, like, this group of equipment here would be, would fill this room, you know? And even in the 90s, this group of equipment here would, would like, definitely be this couch where, you know, stacked this high with, with gear with, like, cables all over the place and 
you know, there'd be so much heat coming off of it that we'd all be in our t-shirts. And, uh, but now, I mean, I could have a step sequencer in my pocket, you know, and I can have a keyboard in my pocket, I can have an effects processor in my pocket. And, uh, that, I mean, the size is, is really incredible. I mean, the other element to it is just the accessibility. Um, you know, you can get a used Game Boy for, or a used DS for 60 to 80 dollars if you get on Craigslist even cheaper. Uh, R4 cards, you can probably get for around 20 to 28, sometimes 40, depending upon what the, you know, what the environment is at that time online. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, I've, 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 I've been, I'm a gearhead like any musician or any electronic artist, and, you know, the access point for a lot of gear is $500, you know, and it's, I mean, and that's for not even great gear. I mean, really good guitars, really good electronic music instruments, you're talking like 1500 bucks is really a starting point for most musical instruments. Um, but this is $60, you know, and it's ready to go. This is, these are at 130 right now, ready to go. Um, I mean, uh, I think the, the most, the most expensive thing as far as like what it does is these, these, these nano loop cartridges from Germany, just comparatively speaking, because a, a Game Boy cartridge would be ridiculously inexpensive these days, like $28. These are like $90 to try to get them to, to send them to you here, but it's also an incredibly powerful and very musical device. Um, and again, it's like, you know, much, much cheaper than any other musical instrument. So that's what really excites me is, is the idea of like, the idea of like having things that are accessible to people at low cost. Things that you can create really intricate musical stuff with that costs very little. So with that in mind, I will...